of the sick people to say that I believe that many mighty miracles will be performed in these next eight Sundays. I trust it will be one of the greatest things that will just hear the key, an old-fashioned revival to start here that it shall not end until the Master himself shall appear on the scene. This morning when I woke up and got up from my bed and went to the window and raised back the curtains on the window and looked back toward Camel's Back Mountain. The green comes between here and the mountain and just as the sun was coming up and shining over the mountain, I thought how thankful that the people of Arizona Phoenix should be to live in such a place. The coast is toward heaven and Phoenix, Arizona. So such a heavenly atmosphere. I love it. And I'm thankful I got these eight weeks to be with you eight Sundays. This Sunday, probably there's many here that I've never met before, and I want to meet you. I would like to have the time with each one of you to speak with you and shake your hand and talk to you. Maybe I can later on. As soon as the service is over, I'm to go to down in California right away. And then from there to Frisco and then to Vancouver, British Columbia to begin to expecting the great crowds of Vancouver because of the Calgarian meeting, that was my last service. The Lord Jesus came in the most powerful meeting that I've ever witnessed in all my life at Calgary. It was powerful all through Canada. The Canadian people, probably there's some of them here now, they will be after the service is over up there because there will be hundreds that won't be able to get in the prayer line will come on down here. But the Canadian people are some 30 to 50 years behind America. They haven't got that fast life that we live now. They're never no hurry. They're very humble and sweet people waiting for the power of Almighty God. And he certainly did manifest his great triumph power among the Canadian people. Death, dumb, blind, cancers, cripples, wheelchairs, or everything taking place. And there were many thousands who did not get into prayer line, which are reported already gathered at Vancouver. One of the most outstanding things I can think of at this time was a little boy in a wheelchair. Which I have made the statement, and it is true as I stand here. He promised me this angel, if I be sincere and would get the people to believe there would be nothing to stand before them. Therefore, they wanted to see what would happen in a prayer line where there was nothing but cripples. And so they gave out that there would be a prayer line, the miracle line, for nothing but cripples. And we would get some of the people, see what would take place by the gift of healing, which it is not a gift of miracles, it's the gift of healing. They wanted to see what would take place in a, a line of that type. There was a young man in the 30s that had followed the meetings from all the way from Saskatoon down to Edmonton, so forth, and on down into Calgary. He had run out of funds. His mother had sold some of her possessions, and there was nothing left then for him to, to thrive on, just enough money to return home. When she heard there was going to be a miracle line just for the cripples, then she pawned her wedding ring to get the boy to stay for the miracle line. I come into my ears that the mother had pawned her wedding ring to keep the boy there. That mother's wedding ring meant just as much to her as my mother's does or my wife or your wife. It means much to her. Maybe her husband might have been dead for all I know. But we managed some way to see that she got repaid for that and her money back. But that night, my little brother brought into the line this boy. He was the most hideous crippled person that I've seen in many years. His arms were drawn down his legs. He was a very, very much of a sight to look at. Just before he was a little judgment of God, for I'll have to give an account for every word that I, every word that I had spoke, I'll have to answer for it. But all of a sudden, my hand, the one which the gift comes to the vibration, got real hot. And I, a little child was some eight, nine years old, maybe not that old. 
I laid upon a little thigh, and something just moved downward. And friends, God be my judge here I stand before, the four inches lacking on the child's leg was perfect. She put this Bible on her head and walked up and down before the audience, just as perfect as any one could walk like that. She was healed over an hour of prayer for her. The next was this cripple boy. After he'd been prayed for for some 35 or 40 minutes, I could not feel that there was any difference. I'll explain it to you later what I mean by that by feeling. And after a while, the, the liberty came. The power that had him down was gone. The next morning, the boy shaved himself. His hands were drawing down. He couldn't even feed himself. He shaved himself, walked into the building, pushed his wheel cart up and down across the floor for the first time for 30 some odd years. He used to meet me. He's got a telegram, and tomorrow he is to meet me at Vancouver to be the first one to greet me and shake my hands, walk out on the field. I had his picture taken off and I had to meet me at the plane after being in his wheelchair for all that time. Of course, God is still God. If I just had the time to tell you the things, but I'm sure that God will make it known unto you in many ways through testimonies and things. I wonder if there's any Canadian friends here, anybody from Canada here, would you just raise your hand? Anyone from Canada? Yes, I see one. What part of Canada, sister? Quebec? Winnipeg. Were you in the Winnipeg meeting? Yes, man. There was also another man at the Winnipeg, one limb about two inches or three inches short, and the other who wore a high shoe, one of those big filled up shoes, and he bought him a new pair of shoes and brought to the meeting to wear away. And God did, will never disappoint anybody with that kind of faith. He went away with his new shoes on, left his old ones laying on the platform. He was whole, made whole. He's wonderful, isn't he? Now, we don't have uh, so much time each evening, but we have many evenings to, or afternoons, rather, to pray for the sick. And I want you, dear people, if you will, all you people who know Jesus as your Savior or healer, I want you this coming week to go and pray with all your heart. I have many thousand miles of flying ahead of me. I am going up on the plum from Vancouver, work down the coast as far as California, coming back to Fresno, or I'm to go tomorrow to the Armenian people. They flew a boy who prays for the sick by the name of Abak. They brought him from Cairo over to pray for a man by the name of Arcadian. The same time they sent for him, they sent up in Indiana and had me to come to a woman with cancer. And both breaths were taken off and the cancer had gone down into her, her the lung cavity. And Three days after the woman was prayed for, she began her shopping on the street, and she's perfectly sound and well now with no sign of cancer at all. And it so got the, the Armenian people over there to see that the Lord Jesus was such a great healer. On this people that's calling now is another cancer case, which is a friend to the woman. By the way, the lady was just given a few more hours to live by some of the noted specialists of St. Louis where they had flew her there by planes to be operated. But now she's well. Makes me think of that song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that would save all we can say hero wrecks like me. Now, this afternoon, how uh, demons that come from the people, to dark into the people's thoughts to sit. But if you be reverent, you shall see the glory of God here in Phoenix. And I think now, if you will, let's bow our heads and have just a word of prayer, if you will, everywhere. That all of you here, the children and all, to be just as reverent as you can be in the room. Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, bless you from the very heart to come again into Phoenix, Arizona, 
coming in the name of our beloved Son, Christ Jesus, coming with God, that they will, beyond any shadow of doubt, be the glory of Almighty God manifested, for the deaf and dumb spirits to leave the people, the blind to leave, the cripples to be set at liberty, when the power of Christ comes down to liberate those who are captured and bound by the powers of Satan. O oh God, I pray thee, be one who in these service, the ministers and in all sponsoring this meeting here for the city of Phoenix. Maybe many of the worldly minded people will not understand just what it means. But those who are spiritual and wise shall know what this means. A sign. O oh, Father, I pray thee to manifest thy power. Bless the ones who gave us the right to this auditorium. I pray that you'll be with every one of them, Father. If there be any unsaved among, may they be saved, Father. And may this house that's been used to hear for different speaking. Father, I pray thee just now that thou wilt sanctify the building for the services of Jesus Christ. And may sinners weep their way to Calvary right here in this building. May sick people be liberated. May demons scream and come out. And may it give this lovely little city the greatest shaping it's ever had. Father, I believe that you have many people here gathering in here in this tough resort in the different parts of the world. And I pray, Father, that you will heal them and let them know that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Oh, God grant it. Let every minister I ask again, Father, that turn their congregation to loose this afternoon to come. I pray that you'll be with all of us. And now, dear God, I thank you for the rest that you have given me up in the mountains. And now coming down with new strength. Oh, Christ, may your gift be more than a match for anything that Satan could lay before us. May the great shaking powers of God loose everything that is unlike God, even through the cold and indifferent hearts of sinful men and women, boys and girls. Help fathers the flames roar across the mountain. I pray that you'll bring me back next Sunday safely to Phoenix again. Father, thou art the captain of our salvation. I pray that you'll help. Now bless in this afternoon's service, and may every heart here be circumcised. May the ears be circumcised to hear the word of God, and circumcise the lips of thy servant to speak that which is right. May great powers be brought forth this afternoon in liberation for the people. And may everyone that comes to the platform come with that one single mind. This is my time, and I shall be liberated. If others are, so can I. And may they not be silent, but in the city, walk the streets and testify this next week, giving praise and glory to God, and may it start even the merchants and all out until there's a great waking here. They might know that the Spirit of God still has preeminence anywhere. You can pierce things the darkest places and pull those out for a crime. Just an analysis to make an estimation now that since I was a thief, there's been at least, I'd say, well, I'd say 25 or 35,000 people prayed for, maybe more than that, and there's been at least 10,000 of them healed. Would you think of that? Such as cancers that are laying at their last moment are well people since the last week. I guess in, the, in the, the provinces of Canada alone, there was at least 
250 or maybe more than that cases of cross-eyed people with their eyes straight. And mute, it's innumerable to count them. For there was multiplied scores of them, it came, that were some deaf, dumb, some hard hearing and everything that were made perfectly whole. Now that's only done through the visitation of the angel. A few nights ago, standing at home, when I came in home from Canada, I couldn't arrive at my house for five days. The people were laying so deep at the place so they kept me out for five days. A few days ago, the people would come up and they would have someone there to turn them away, coming from all parts of the nation. And the night, last Sunday morning, my little church asked if I would come by and have teach to them on the book of Revelation. I did. Then at the end, the associate pastor said, Now, Brother Branham is not praying for sick because he's waiting and holding his strength to arrive at Phoenix. And so he said, Don't no one ask for prayer. But I stood to shake their hands at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock they got me away from the place. And I had on a watch and I took hold of a woman there first that had a tumor and the tumor stopped, the vibration stopped my watch. I can't tell you people with a watch on. I can show it to you this afternoon. It'll stop it every time, vibration over that brand new long jeans watch. But it, it'll stop, the, the vibration will stop it. And I showed a minister from Ukraine. He's here in the audience this afternoon somewhere. And he... It, it stopped, the vibration stopped. Then Sunday night, when it was over to have this is sermon for them, why there were some people formed a prayer line, and I asked them if I'd stand and pray for them in mass form, if they would believe. And they said they did. Then they, <laughs> bless their hearts, they, they wanted to shake my hand or something, you know, to get close. And they all passed by shaking hands. And then some of the people that had been here with cancer and tuberculosis and so forth, they were standing, wanted to to be seen. Some people that I have told you about of the seal, they were standing up, and I, while standing there, I felt the presence of this angel come near. Looking out over the audience, I felt the lady that he was calling for. I seen she'd been in the prayer line. God knows I didn't know what was wrong with the lady. And I said, come here, you. And she just sat and looked at me. I said, you there. And the lady said, you mean this lady here? And I said, yes. She said, well, she's dead. And I said, well, bring her here. This is the time she's to be healed. Now, see, that has to come from God. I said, how long has she been dead? I said, her sister's somewhere in the building. And there was just about as many people in the building as there is in the center aisle, I guess, as all could get in in the outside. And the lady came up, and she said, her sister said she's been deaf all of her life, practically, since she was a child, anyhow, around 12 years old. Well, as soon as I took over her hand there, showed when I was praying for him, I was using the right hand. Then on the left hand, showed vibration. And a few moments, the death spirit was cast from the lady, and she was looking. I snapped my finger. She turned and looked. I said, you hear me, don't you? And her hearing was perfect. And she began crying, very uh, uh, fine-dressed lady. She began crying with her hands up in the air. And the people began to run around, then they got me out through the back way. Because, you see, friends, I can only, I am just a human, I'm just a man. But it has to come from Almighty God, you see. Did you notice the Master, he would go into the city and maybe perform one miracle and then leave the city? Did you notice that? Many times like that. Wasn't there many lepers in the days of, of Elisha, but only one was sent to him? That was Naaman. Is that true? Or tell how many more lepers came, but one was sent to him, and that was the one the Lord had intended. And the only way that I can tell is when I feel that something from the person that gives me the access to this supernatural power that is not mine, it's his power, then there's nothing, no matter what it is, I say it in the name of the Lord. Now, who was he speaking to? Moses. Many of you in your Sunday school lessons has read of this great Bible character, Moses. I like him because he was a, a shadow of the, of the coming of Christ. He was just a shadow of Christ's coming. Notice, now when the people of Israel had gone down in Egypt and had come into bondage for 420 years, which he had already told Abraham that they would do, 
when the time of the promise drew nigh, then I want you to notice how, notice it now, how that when the time of the promise drew nigh, the people began at that time to see that there was something happened to them, some trouble. And God always calls trouble, mostly always, to bring the people together. Did you know that? I believe there will be a time when there won't be any more uh, division amongst the people of God, such as I belong to this church and I belong to that church. I believe the persecution will run all the big ranching and churches of God together and will be one Christ Jesus. Amen. He'll take her home. Now, we won't argue whether this doctrine is right or that. Now notice, then at the time of the promise through now that raised up a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph and it put burdens upon the people. And the people were so burdened that they could not make the, the bricks and things that they were supposed to. And then, would you think that God would flag his people in that manner? Yes. For the word of God is eternally true. Is that right? And he promised he would deliver them in no other way he had to do it but this way. So therefore, at the time of the persecution of Israel, then God had an angel to come down to the earth. But before he had the angel to come, he had a little boy born down there by the name of Moses. Is that correct? And this little boy, Moses, was born rather a peculiar birth. And then at the age of maturity, he was sent out to deliver the children of Israel, for they were in bondage. And God told him before he went now, I'll set my, send my angel before thee. Now, God could have sent the angel down, could he? He could let the angel come itself, but instead of that, he sent the angel to speak to the voice of a man. God always used man for his work. Is that right? He don't use organizations or so forth and mechanical advices, but he uses man. The Holy Spirit fell upon man. That's God's instrument here on earth. He was the first one who had the jurisdiction over everything in the earth. Is that right? Over all the animals. And he lost his, his power. And we're taught in the Bible what the first Adam lost, the second Adam Christ restored again to the human race. Then, friends, of that so ministers, what's the matter with the church today? That's what I'm saying. If Christ was the missing link between God and man, and he's come to hook God and man together again, what is the matter today? It's because of unbelief, and you'll start something, and you'll see a little something friction, you say, oh, well, let it go. It wasn't of God. All things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. If you're building the house and you say, well, this person just don't fit in here, because look where this block is, this big open place here, all that looks, if it move on, keep building the house, God's got another block that'll fit in there, that'll fill that up. The house can't be built like that. So today, while God is moving, let's forget about it and move right out in the spirit of Almighty God. And there, see the house of God restored again. Notice, now, at the day that God was bringing his people together, there arose a great persecution on, on the people, and Moses was sent for a deliverer. He opened the Red Sea, he done all these miracles. They know no more about it than a hot and hot hole about Egyptian night. That is right! And even spirits that's in the sun, he recognized it before man who claimed he even had the Holy Spirit. That's true. Any man can say those things. But if God does not testify of it, it's wrong. Is that right? But if God testifies of it, it's the works of God. Is that true? If I come here to speak in the name of a prophet, and I do not the things that a prophet does, then don't believe me. But if I come in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of prophecy, and as his servant, and I do the things that is written of his servant, then you believe me. Will you do that? 
If the deaf don't hear, the dumb don't speak, the blind don't see, the cripples don't walk, if prophecies of sin have been foretold to people and your sins from the time you was a child foretold, then believe that this angel that come to me is false and I'm false with him. But if it manifests itself you on the platform before you, you believe it and repent of your sins and get free for the hour of his visitation drawing near. That's right. For he only does those things to confirm his word. Look. Anyway, before any judgment's ever sent to the earth, God sends forth and warns the people. That's right. And friends, you listen to my word. If it's in touch with God, one of the greatest judgments that's ever hit all the world is on its road. I remember that. Someday I'll be gone. But you see, remember, many of you younger people and some of you older will see that I have told you the truth. That's right. Now, this gift comes by, if you people are afraid and ask for God to send a gift, he sent it. A few months ago, when I shared Phoenix, it was news. But now, no doubt, you're reading newspapers, your magazines, the life and times, and so forth. And it's heard come around the world. Two nights before I come here in the house, five different nations called in. And the capital of Turkey called in and said, We have heard that the Lord God Almighty has stretched forth his arms to heal in America. Said, Is there any way that we could get a few crumbs? Hunger! Heathen! Call oh, people rise in the name of your Lord. Claim your God-given privilege for the hours here for you to be healed. That's right, to glorify God and to receive of his spirit and his blessing. Cut off of all formalities. Cut off of all this ritualistic religion and come into the realms of a living God who awakens the human soul and brings him into righteousness, into worship of him in the spirit and in the truth. For the hours come and now is that God has sent forth his morning. Comes by vibrations from the hand. The very God that sent his angel before most angel here. That is right. I've tried to be sincere. And I want you to know this, that I'm made before morning. I know not. But in the room that night when he came to you people, it appeared to me many times in the form of a, of a star. I've seen it many times. But when it came visible, it was a man that was seemingly would weigh 200 pounds. A little over two years ago now, I was sitting in the room, I was reading a little Scofield Bible, and I heard something first, I saw a light, and I thought it was an automobile that turned the corner. But it turned that it got brighter, and I looked out the door, and there was no automobile. Then I heard something coming like this one, walking. And I looked, and the light got greater, and just above me hung a great sign. And the light was kind of a, more of a green, between green and yellow, shining on the floor. And coming walking through this light came a man that looked like, as I said before, would weigh 200 pounds. A huge man. He did not have beard over his face like Christ pictured us. Who he is, I do not know. But he had dark shoulders. He was more of an olive complexion. He had dark eyes. He walked as close to me as the microphone is there. Yes. It's true, friends. I couldn't speak. And he said to me, I just sit there. And he said, Fear not. I'm sent from the presence of God to tell you that this peculiar life of yours, peculiar birth, is a gift of divine healing to the peoples of the world. And said, If you'll be sincere and will get the people to believe you, there will be no disease stand before your prayer, not even to cancer. And he said, it'll come to pass that you'll tell the people their diseases from a vibration over your hand. Then, if you will be reverent on, then you'll tell the people the sins of their lives and the things that they have done. Dear friends, there's a Bible before me this afternoon that has come to pass. I went forth. Now, that's what I question. And I'm not going to ask you right out in the public like that because... Many of you might put up your hands and for, you didn't understand. But I believe that there's some of you here, for I know this by the Spirit. I try to pull myself away to say, I talk to you as sternly as I possibly could. Notice, in the Spirit now, I feel that there's going to be many, many things happening. Because there's faith sitting here. I know a man sitting right in the building right now that's afflicted. I can call that man to this platform and be healed right now. That's right. I know he's here in the building. I feel his spirit is coming from the left side of me. Over here. That is true. 
I wonder if a little Spanish girl from Sacramento that's sitting in that building that night would sit there and she was sitting way back in the building and she had said within her heart, she was Catholic. She said, I can't get to where Brother Brennan is, but if he only look at me in the eye, I'll be healed. I know nothing about the girl. She'd been down, uh, down farther to Long Beach or somewhere in there with the meeting. I come into service that night, I was preaching. And while I was preaching, I seemed to, uh, uh, seemed like the face kept pulling it this to my right side. I looked back down and way down through the building, I said, that young lady sitting back so far, tell her to come here. I said, come here, young lady. I got her testimony. She almost fainted. She said, me, I said, the little round hat on, come here. Walked humbly up. She had, had two burpers. I talked her by the hand. I said, you had two burpers. But thus saith the Lord. That was all. It was done. The next morning, she re- gave her heart to Christ. She was baptized and brought her family. And she's to meet me here in Phoenix. I don't know where the girl is. Are you in the building, sister? Anywhere now from Sacramento up there, California? She's to be over here in the Phoenix meeting this time. If you are, raise up. Stand up if you are. I might miss your hand somewhere if you're in the building. A little Spanish girl, I guess about 18, 20 years old, something like that. She's to be here. She'll witness to you this week. That's just one of the things of the hundred has taken place. Now I can do the same thing here. And I'll call your attention if this man shall come in the line, because I'm afraid to call him now because it would be conspicuous sound like. I don't have just the preeminence to call him at this time, but I know he's here. There's a man here who's a perfect stranger, never seen him before in my life. Just as death as death can be. That's right. But he's sitting here. If that man is in the building, this, if that man comes to this prayer line this afternoon and I get to touch him under this anointing that I have now, the man's ears will be perfectly open. Thus saith the law. If that isn't right, then call me a false prophet. I should call him to the platform. If he gives me one more, I'm waiting just a second to see what he says about it. I'll watch and see what I tell you. Now we're going to form the prayer line. Just in a few moments. Now I want you to do this. If there be a modern skeptic in the building, I warn you in the name of the Lord Jesus, do not sit in the building during this time. For cancer, deafness, epileptic, they come from one to another. I'll explain that later. You all understand? How many have heard me explain how diseases are germs? And germs are life. You are a germ yourself. You come from the germ of life. Is that right? Well, if you come from your, by your father and mother, a germ of life, a cancer is a germ. A cataract is a germ. A tumor is a germ. Two burpers is a germ. Is that right? Where did they come from? What kind of life are they? The doctors call it. That's medical names saying cancer, cataract, so forth like that. Jesus called them a devil. Is that right? And that's what they are, and anyone knows the devil means a tormentor, and that something is tormenting your body. Now, I want to know that how many believe that God has sent his gift of healing? Now, let's see. God bless you. Oh, my. Eighty-five percent of the crowd believe. Then, under such as that, I'll assure you to see the glory of Almighty God. Now, remember... While I step out for a word of prayer after having prayer with you here, if, let me give you some advice. For my sake and for your sake, it'll only cause reproach. Remember, one thing too, this is not a gift to perform miracles. He, the last time he spoke to me was at Vandale, Illinois. Is anybody here from the Vandale meeting was up there at Vandale, Illinois? A person in the building here that was there? When the angel of the Lord came down and said, You are confined, it will come to pass.
down by vibration. There's no vibrations on her hand. Only she did have just a little touch of feeling of trouble, a little bad in her stomach. She didn't have any stomach trouble, such as having uh, a little mite like gas on her stomach and so forth like that. Is that right, lady? Now, how would I know that? That's right. See? But now, here's what happened. She just real nervous spell. But mainly a mental, psychic condition. She called it scary feeling. She gets weary. A place just like, oh, he's just screaming. And you feel like you're going to lose your mind. Well, that's the way you can see Now, what is that? Now, it's not normal if there's a doctor sitting close. You know that's not normal for a human being to be like that. Now, what is it? It's not exactly a disease of the body, but how I feel that around it is a gloomy feeling. Did you ever get onto a dark place in an alley or something to be scared all at once? Or walking on the streets or anywhere? How many ever had that experience of being scared? There's something there to scare you, is that right? There's something there to make you scared. There's something causing that lady that makes her feel that way. But now, it's lifted. It's gone. Now the lady will go home and be normal. Now, you live close, sister? New Mexico. All right, if you're around here in the next four or five weeks, come and see what happens. Now, you go on your road and join just go praising God and saying, thank you, dear God. And all that gloomy feeling will be gone and you'll have it no more. God bless you. I just die in here every night. All right. Now, here's a poor little boy that really is in a serious condition. I want you to raise your head all the way. I want you to look here at my hand. I want you to look at this hand here. Can you see it from where? Let me get back there on these lines. I look at my hand. I body. He's got a tumor. Look at this hand here, how white it is. You see, I'm mashing down on this hand. Same damn on that. See, I'm white looking specks in the hand. Red flag. Poor little thing. What did the doctor say was wrong with you? Tumor? Tumor of the glass. Right. Now... Of course, it's beyond operation now, and you, and you have faith to believe that God will let the little boy get well. That's your only hope, isn't it? Your only hope. All right, bow your head now, friends. I want you to know it. I'm going to hold my hand this way, the way it was. I just bow your head. I don't say it will leave. I only have to ask God. Dear Heavenly Father, I think what if this is my little boy, little Billy Paul. And the little fellow is standing here with no other way to live in this life except by you now. Nothing can be done anymore. But faith and frame the world together. He said, I can if he believes. Dear God, I don't know how to be any more sincere with you. This poor little fellow is going to die. Doctors can do no more. It's just mercy. The mother standing here, father knows it's her last chance. The last thing she can do is to bring the little boy here to be prayed for. God have mercy, will you, Father? I've showed the people the vibration of this demon that's tormenting the little fellow. God, if father, mother, or anyone who has sinned or give it to them. Anywhere through the generation, someone has sinned, oh Christ, please, or heaven. And I pray that you give power over this demon. Thou demon, call tumor, I come to meet thee in the name of Jesus Christ. This day thou shalt leave him. Come out of him. Almighty and all this is God. Help me, dear God. Lord, God may be known to his country that thou art God and I be thy servant. Thou demon, I come to meet thee in the name of Jesus Christ. I assure thee, come out of the child in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Right, audience.
raise your hand. As you see my hand, and watch what happens from red. I watch it turning white. Can you sit leaving? Can you know the audience sit leaving? There it is, perfectly normal. Why not a vibrating run to his little lady? Where do you live, lady? Here it be. Bring you back to me close to you. We always say thank the Lord, all of them. These are not these are things that you don't notice, friend. But they're, they're here just the same. They're happy. Now be ready to keep your head down. Dear Father, the brothers stand here now on the record. One lady answered and stated that his father was with this asthmatic condition. But thou art here to heal him. Thou art here to make him well. God is crippled along here on his presence. Father, maybe if he could get the other land, he might not have heard inside him, but thou hast said it's better to enter into the kingdom of God with one limb or one eye. And he cast in the hell hole. The Father now that he has become God's servant has prayed his God to live. Satan, leave the man in the name of Jesus Christ.
bring one thing to heal my wife and to heal my daughter. God, for this moment, I'll, by your help, I'll follow what you say to me. Grant it, Lord. And let man do what they think is best. Father, I shall follow thy lead. Now, help me to go to this woman, Father, in the spirit of peace, and reduce this power that is in her. Thou demon, come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. Love him. Stop the name. All right? What are you trying? Well, California.
It's the, and this last night, I told you, night before last, that the angel of God was standing in the room where I was at. Remember that? That's enough witness for me, people. I don't want no one pulling anybody up and say, heal this and heal that one. Let God witness to you. Now, that's the truth. Now, next Sunday, we're going to run the line just exactly like we always do. And now, look, out of this entire meeting today, and there's been several dead people come by here, and dead people, and then as I call that, even the vibrations will be released. That's right. And they'll leave and take a hold of them and come back again. It was just a witness. Now, I want these same deaf and dumb people that were here today come in the line next Sunday just in an ordinary line. Come right into the line, it's hard to know. And don't no one, remember, don't no one come to me and ask me to perform any miracle anymore. I, God has permitted up to this time. And every one of you is a witness of it. Is that right? Say amen. He will continue to perform miracles, but not those who bring the miracles. I want to be led of the Spirit of God on what I'm doing from this on, regardless of what Brother Kitty or anybody else says about it. This is enough witness to me and Almighty God. Do you think I'm right? Did you do raise your hand? Yeah. I think I'm right. I think now I'm getting on the line where I can get things straightened out. May Almighty God bless and have mercy. Now, bring your, them same people back in the line next week to come through the other line so they can be healed. But don't never anyone ask me to come here and heal this person, heal that person. I'll let the Holy Ghost tell me to stop on you not to that guy. Now, let's bow our heads while I talk to you just a moment, if you will. Be reverent, man. Don't be here, reverend. Be going. Man. Father, I thank you today. Because thou hast let me see thy great hands. I understand now why your angels can be living together. You're the witness. God, I've been wrong. I've done wrong at the very hour of every day that you have come to me. Now, God, you forgive me for the world. And from this day to him, as far as I know, I'll feel the word of the Lord and drop in the bed. And then today we will take the ride and see if I can keep other things to prayer. Or everything to miracle. And we told you, or asked you other things, that if you would bring everyone by here to do it, then I would continue on and have nothing but a miracle line. But if you did not do the people in this miracle line, then it was a witness that if you were going to do the people by letting them have a sign, those people did. Now, an angel of God, you told me to come to pass, but they wouldn't believe that there was a miracle. And your word is in me. Almighty God, forgive me for my stupidity. And I pray that you will be with me now and will help me as I journey from here. And from this time, hence, Father, I shall only go as your spirit be. Forgive me, God, and help me now to go farther to this place with that you, knowing before witnesses of thousands of people here, or hundreds of people here, right, that you are here and have confirmed your word this day before us all. Grandfather, and then next Sunday bring forth the great news meaning as the faith in the future, or in the past, I mean to say. And then, Father, your great name shall be glorified, for we have to be in the future. I want to know amongst my audience and community, how many of you think that I'm doing that way you are? Here's what it's been. It's been a fuss and a push to try to get to that front line. Is that right? A fuss and a push to everybody trying to get. From this time, God being my helper, I shall just keep the same line I'm doing up there in my life I am in Oregon. Just stand and pray for the people, and they're supposed to be leaving. And they got so they won't leave while the witness come back. They're as close to I didn't get prayed for, and they went right to the line. Because there was a miracle performed. Hundreds of letters poured into my secretary today. They didn't even pray for me. I went to the bag line. You're supposed to be leaving, friend. And take God at his word. Now, would you pray for me this week and for next Sunday? We'll come forth to see the Lord. We'll see you. God bless you.